This operating system's purpose is to make sense of what we see. It is how we know a chair from a table and a cat from a dog. Very early on, it helps shape and determine our identity. I am not you, I am I. Each of us, using this operating system, knows how we are distinct and different from others. For example, Denise and I are both Anglican priests, but you can tell us apart because she has a kitten and I have a dog. We identify ourselves to make us unique and special, but this operating system also separates us from one another. It makes us the center of our known universe. My reference point is fixed within me. I understand the world from that experience. This operating system seems to function well when the world makes sense to our experience. But what happens to our sense of self when it doesn't? When we see white light refracted through a prism for the very first time, we discover contrary to what we see, white is not white, but the spectrum of the rainbow. It can be disconcerting to discover that what we know to be reality is a mirage, that our perceived reality is an illusion created by our operating system is a teaching found in all the great wisdom traditions. The reality the mirage blinds us to is that there is no self. There is no inside or, and outside. Nothing is separated from everything else. That we think otherwise is an illusion created by our operating system, tearing everything to bits and pieces so we can perceive it. Jesus calls us, like all wisdom teachers, to upgrade our operating system. He calls us to repent. Today he might say, upgrade and reboot. He is challenging us to a higher level of consciousness. The upgrade is to a non-dual or unitive system. The good news is we don't even have to purchase or download it. It lies latent within us, waiting to be booted up. This operating system does not operate by differentiation. It does not divide by inside and outside, or subject and object. It harmonizes instead. It hears chords instead of single notes. It sees the world in its relatedness not its differences. It doesn't conclude, I think, therefore I am. It begins with, I am, therefore I think, feel, intuit, reflect, and connect. I am one with the cosmos. There is no separation between me and God, between me and my neighbor, between me and the planet. This raised consciousness is the beginning of wisdom. Jesus devoted and gave his life to this cause because from his level of consciousness, he knew we would never know an abundant life without living it generously and the joy of love without squandering it wastefully. He needles and wheedles his disciples and us with his actions, sayings, and parables I am convinced his intention was to invite us to wonder and question, to come and see a new way of being. Perhaps by confounding our present operating system, he thought he could cause it to freeze up and make us reboot into a new reality, a new reality where the wisdom of Solomon, grasping for personal power, is forsaken for the wisdom of Jesus, a wisdom where clinging to the false reality 
that we are the center of the universe deprives us from knowing we are the essence of the God with whom we are one. That is chapter one of wisdom for dummies. So much to let go of, so little time. Amen.